When we think of lead gen forms in PBC, our minds typically run to the social channels, LinkedIn, Facebook, hey, even Quora has lead gen forms now. But we can't forget about Google, because recently Google announced lead gen form extensions. It's not a full lead form like you can add it to your display campaigns. It will be a tiny little extension in your search network ads, and it is only available on mobile. So in this video, I just wanna show you all the features that are part of these lead gen extensions right now, and maybe we get an idea of what's yet to come. Now, before I go any further, I just wanna call out industries that are most likely ineligible to use the lead gen extension beta. And even beyond just specific industries, certain policies, if you violate, can get you disapproved from using the extension. We see the usual suspects here. Anyone doing adult-oriented content, if you're promoting alcohol or gambling, anything related to healthcare and medicines and political content, these are the common areas that we even see excluded from other features within Google Ads. In some cases, it is straight up a legal issue. In other areas, like we see policy violations, like in the last few bullet points on the right-hand side, Anyone who is misusing someone's personal information, they're promoting misleading offers that do not exist or they can't fulfill those offers, and any other violations which are called out within Google's ad policies, you're not gonna be able to use this beta. And if this goes out of beta and available for everyone to use, most likely these areas will still not be able to use the extension. Then besides typical policy requirements, here are just some general requirements that also apply if you want to test out the lead gen extensions. First, you must show an accurate business name, but there actually is some leeway with this point. Anyone with a business name that is an actual domain, for example, let's pretend our brand name is paidmediapros.com. We don't have to put paidmediapros.com as our business name. We can actually leave it as just paid media pros. So domain-based business names have an extra option to utilize here. Image requirements, again, pretty straightforward. Making sure that you are using appropriate images that all stay in line within Google's image policies. Your image has to represent what you are offering or what you are asking the user to do. And then also that it's clear, no blurry images. All falls within the typical Google Ads image policies. And then there is the webhook requirements. So webhook is a feature within the lead gen extensions that can allow you to take the leads straight from Google using an API feature and then bringing them back directly into your CRM. Now there are certain rules within the webhooks and I'm not too familiar with this one because I haven't tested this one out yet, but knowing that the webhook URL that you use to reference your CRM, that URL has to be accurate. For whatever reason, if it's broken or it's just not working, you will automatically not be allowed to use the lead gen forms until you either remove that webhook connection or you fix that URL issue. I am going to briefly mention the webhook stuff in just a couple seconds, but first let's jump back into a Google Ads account to show you how we can start setting up our lead gen extensions. When you are in your Google Ads account, head over to Ads and Extensions, and then click on Extensions. And then to create a new ad extension, hit the blue plus button, and then you may see the Lead Form Extension Beta option. Now as we click this one, if you are brand new to setting up lead gen extensions, you are going to see the Terms of Service. And we're seeing some pretty typical stuff here in the Terms of Service. As the advertiser, you are agreeing to use the information properly. You're gonna collect users' information in accordance to your privacy policy, which you will have to add to your lead gen extensions, and we'll get to that soon. You have to promise that you're not gonna sell anyone's information or abuse that information by spamming them later on. And then depending on where you are located and the laws within your area, you're agreeing to comply with those laws to make sure everything is good from a legal standpoint. Now, the next part of the terms and service regards the webhook, which we just talked about. Again, I'm not too familiar with this feature. None of my clients right now are using the API to get the lead gen data back into a CRM. But if you do use the webhook, you do agree to comply with the Google API terms of service as well. If everything here looks good, you can click accept and we can continue to the lead gen extension creation. Next we see you will be able to choose which campaigns you want this particular extension to be applied to. You can choose all campaigns or you may want to choose specific campaigns. Once you have the proper campaign selected, hit done. And now I'm gonna just run through setting up your actual lead gen extension. And as we're going through this creation, you'll be able to see the preview off to the right hand side. We're only gonna see the mobile preview because this extension is only available for mobile devices. So first, use the menu to choose your call to action. Right now there is a preset list for us to choose from. We cannot add our own custom call to action. Learn more is gonna be the easiest one if you don't see any other option that's gonna really apply to your specific business. But as you can see, we have get quote, apply now, sign up. You can go down to subscribe, download, and a few other options. For now, I'm just gonna leave it as learn more. Next, we have 30 characters to add some text to the extension. These two main components within the blue box that we see on the screen are gonna be the first thing a user sees that's gonna entice them to want to click on your lead gen extension. Since the lead gen extension is only available for your search campaigns, anytime anyone clicks on your lead gen extension to open up the form, the advertiser will be charged as a click. So this component is gonna be the main attention grabbing piece. 
But once the user does click on your extension, they will be shown the form. And as we start creating this form, you will also get another preview showing you what the users will most likely see. First, let's add a headline, which is also 30 characters, just like the extension text. Next, we have to add in our business name. Again, it's gotta be your actual business name. Next, you have 200 characters to add a description. Depending on what you are promoting within the extension, you can describe the offer in more detail, give the user more information that you might not have been able to fit into the extension text or your headline, and just as how I like to utilize descriptions within my typical text ads, it gives you an opportunity to add more value statements to your lead gen extension that hopefully entices the user to have more incentive to give you their information. And as we can see, the headline, the business name, and the description all show up at the top of the lead form. As we go down further, we can now choose what information we want to ask for. Typically, we see less is better. The more we make people work on mobile devices, I see the less likely they are actually to fill out the form. But just to show you what it looks like, I'm going to click all four options. We have name, email, phone number, and postal code. Next, you will need to add a privacy policy URL, typical within all lead gen form setups we see across all the channels. And after you add your privacy policy URL, you will see that it will be added as a link within the disclosure of the lead gen form. So that will show up under their privacy policy. And then Google will add a separate link for their own privacy policy, just so the user has full transparency on how their data is being used. I'm going to scroll back up on the preview a little bit. And last, we have the option to add a background image. So if you've used images already, let's say for your display campaigns, your response to display ads, you will be able to go to the recently used section and just utilize any of those. Or you can choose to upload new files. If you find the one you want, you have the option to crop it. If everything looks good, just click continue and then click save. So again, as we talked about the image policy requirements in the beginning of this video, just choose an image that is related to what your business does and potentially the offer you are giving to your users. Let's say the user is happy, they love everything that you're offering, they fill out their information, they're gonna submit the form. So now we have an option to create a form submission message that will not only give users confirmation that you received their information, but now the advertiser has a chance to set the proper expectations on what the user can expect next. And as I entered in my description, again, we have 200 characters to use. You can see the preview changed to the submission message. And I'm letting users know in this hypothetical example, we received your request and someone from our team will be reaching out to you within 24 business hours, setting the proper expectations so the user knows what is going to happen next. We can then choose an optional call to action we may want the user to visit our website. If you are using your lead gen extensions to have the user maybe download a guide or PDF or a white paper, you can actually change that to download. So if you have that user's information now, you can send them to that URL or landing page where that specific piece of content lives. And then the user will download it right away. You don't need to contact them anymore, but then also make sure you are updating your description to let them know that. While I'm pretending this lead gen extension is for the service department, from a car dealership standpoint, I probably want to drive that user back to my website to maybe look at new car deals that we have this weekend or other new features or maybe upgrade the service that they already signed up for. Again, looking at ways that we could potentially upsell the user. But for now, I'm just tossing in a random URL. And then last, if we're looking in the preview, we see Google being a little sneaky. So driving users to the website isn't the only call to action a user has. Google tosses in a continue searching on Google to bring them back to the google.com interface. That's something we can't control. We're just playing the game, right? But if everything looks good, you can click save and your lead gen extension will show up on the main extensions page. So I already talked about how if a user just clicks on the lead gen extension just to open up the form, they will be charged for a click. A conversion will count and it'll show up within your columns over here if a user has actually filled out the form and submitted it. So to actually go back and see the leads that came from your lead gen extension, your first option is the webhook, which again, you have to use the Google API to feed that directly into your CRM, or you will have the option in the blue link below each of your lead gen extensions to download the leads. And there you will see, you will get a CSV that'll export your lead information for you. Now in this particular case, I just created the extension, so there's not gonna be any lead information showing up. But once you start seeing some conversions coming through from your lead gen extension, you will be able to export the report, pulling in all the information that you requested from the user. So in our case, we asked for the name, the email, the phone number, and the postal code. All of that information will be there in clean columns, you'll be able to see all the leads that you collected from this specific extension. So then either you can pass it on to your client to show all the leads that you brought them, or if you're working in-house, you'll be able to take those leads and add them to your CRM manually if you can't do it with the webhook. 
So now you know how to set up the extension, think of different ways that you can test out different lead gen extensions. Maybe you want to test out different call to actions and extension text. The initial thing that a user sees when they see the extension. You can now test what image you're going to use from your actual lead gen form. You can test your lead gen form headline. You can test in the amount of form fields that you asked. Maybe that'll help your conversion rates with your lead gen extension. You won't know until you give it a try. So that is my run through on a lead gen form extension. Hopefully your industry can use this and start testing this out on mobile devices. Again, it is still in beta, so we don't know when this actually will get released and when it does, what features may be added or removed from these extensions. So in the meantime, just keep testing and see how it works in your campaigns. Thanks for watching our video. Make sure to subscribe to the Paid Media Pros channel to see more videos. 